a posteriori evidence. The clock is in Father Spitzer's hand. Okay. That's something we can verify together. It's posterior to experience. It's making use of my experience. And so, of course, as being used by my experience, it can, uh, uh, we can verify that together. And, and just, let's just take a look at that a priori kind of experience, because probably that's the kind that we don't have a whole lot of knowledge of. And let's just see that for a second. What, what could, what kind of data can we have together that will enable us to be absolutely sure of our uh, corroboration together, which makes absolutely no recourse to our sensation, or no recourse to our sensation any immediate or direct way. What would that be? And it's all grounded in a principle of non-contradiction. goes back to the time of Plato and Aristotle, who first elucidated it, but let's just call this the principle of non-contradiction. principle of non-contradiction, just remember this one thing. Something cannot both be and not be with respect to the same thing at the same place and time. Something can't be both X and not X in the same respect at the same place and time. Now, when you have that kind of an experience, when you have uh, or, uh, that kind of a thought, you say, yeah, of course that's true. Something can't be X, say a square, and not X, say a circle, in the same respect at the same place and time. Go ahead and try that for a second. Something is a square circle. Something is both a square and a circle and with the same area, right? In the same respect at the same place and time. So an object both has four inscribed right angles, a square, and no inscribed right angles, a circle, in the same respect at the same place and time. Something is a square circle. Go ahead. Try it. Oh. I mean, literally, you can go back and forth real, real fast, but you can't have the same thing with the same, uh, the, the same object in the same respect, having two different sets of boundaries at the same place and time. That principle of non-contradiction, you know, so much of mathematics is grounded in that principle of non-contradiction. So much of metaphysics, so much of logic, pure logic, is grounded in that one single principle, which you and I together, we can access this equally, publicly, accessibly, in the same respect at the same place and time. Let me just take you a little step further here. Because, of course, we can know all kinds of things. We can know, for example, that, um, that the, the, the principle of non-contradiction can also apply to, say, protons and electrons. It doesn't have to be square circles. You can also say, very unequivocally, something can't be both a proton and an electron in the same respect at the same place and time. I mean, just think about it for a second. I mean, think here you've got something acting like an electron. Remember, electrons repel other electrons and they attract protons to themselves, whereas protons, protons repel other protons, but they attract electrons to themselves. So think for a second, just for a moment, something that acts like both a proton and an electron, right? They actually have opposite actions. One's attracting while the other's repelling. Just think for a second, a proton-electron in the same respect at the same place and time. Oh, you can go back and forth as fast as you want, but you can't have that thing acting in exactly the same way at the same place and time. Let's just call that for a second. That's the principle of non-contradiction. That principle grounds... Uh, uh, so much mathematics, metaphysics, pure logic, and of course so much of what we do in science when we're reasoning about our empirical data in science. Now here's what I just want you to capture for a moment, and, and then if you get this insight, I mean we can go on to the proofs for God's existence because the proofs for God's existence need both a priori and a posteriori evidence. You have to sort of understand this principle of non-contradiction in order to have proofs. So let's just talk about it for a second. Those proofs are grounded in, you know, thinking about not just what can't exist. So remember, any contradiction is impossible. It cannot exist. It cannot be in any possible universe. 
It cannot be in any region in our You can't have a square circle tomorrow. You can't have a square circle a hundred years from now in the same respect at the same place in time. You can't have a proton electron in another region of this universe. If there were other universes out there, you couldn't even have a square circle in another universe out there. You couldn't have a square circle, a proton electron, or any other contradiction at any other place in time. And just think of that for a moment. A priori evidence actually has a characteristic that we call universality. That is to say, it is good for all possible universes and all places and all times. It can never not be. A contradiction can never not be impossible. Always must be impossible in any possible universe, any place, and any time. Boy, that is a wonderful character. That's why mathematics, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So long as you are going to uh, utilize uh, the Euclidean postulates, right? For all intents and purposes, A squared plus B squared equals C squared is going to be true in any possible universe, place, and time with those postulates, the parallel postulate in particular. Now, if that's the case, then we've got two kinds of evidence here. We're going to blend them. A posteriori evidence, that's the one that makes recourse to the sensation, that one is conditioned by space and time. The clock is in Father Spitzer's hand here and now, but not now. And so you always need to have then a spatial and a temporal coordinate for any kind of a posteriori evidence. But with a priori evidence, because it's universal, right? It applies to all places, all times, all universes, right? You don't need that. Square circles don't exist any time, any time in the future, anywhere, any place, any region, any universe, etc. Now, the proofs for God's existence are grounded in both of these kinds of evidence, but there's just one more thing to see about this a priori evidence. Fascinating as it is, a priori evidence is not just about negative statements. Square circles don't exist. It is about really also positive, you know, uh, characteristics. It's also about then um, uh, we, we can prove that something does exist. So for all intents and purposes, then we can see, for example, that. Um, uh, well, let's take this diagram that you see on your screen right now. Now, that diagram, you'll notice we can just take a hypothetical statement, okay? And, and this is uh, something that we're going to discuss in, in a unit that's coming up in, a, in about six units from now. And it's, it's about a kind of a way of proving David Hilbert's supposition about uh, the impossibility of, of uh, past time. But notice this that the opposite statement must also be true. So notice, once you prove that past time being infinite is impossible, so you prove that to be contradictory, notice at the very same time, you're showing that past time must be finite, at which point you're proving, as it were, a creator or the need for a creation. So let's just say that one more time. To prove that something is a contradiction is to prove that it is impossible. And now to prove that something is impossible means that its opposite statement must be true. So we can set out a hypothetical statement. For example, past time is infinite. Keeps on going backwards forever, let's say. Let's call that a hypothesis for just a second. If you could show that that hypothesis was a contradiction, and therefore you could show that that was impossible, then you could turn right around and show something else, very peculiar indeed. That the opposite of that statement, namely past time is finite, must be true in all possible universes, places, and times. Well, how would you go about doing that for a second? Well, look at that diagram just one more time. And in that diagram, just see for a second then that you, uh, you can split that uh, up right at the word is. 